for me in welcoming Terry Penn. Good evening. I have many people tonight to thank for making this event possible. Thank you to Marian Luntz, my friends on the museum film committee, for inviting me to program this film screening and from whom I've learned so much over the years. I should also thank Sarah Baker, who was wonderful in helping with publicity for this event. Um, thank you to my Houston family, Clinton, Carolyn, and Andrew Wong, who are staunch supporters of the museum and my work here. And I'd also like to give a shout out to my two sweet boys who are up there and are very proud of their mama. <laughs> and my thanks to you for joining me tonight. Now, I know some of you are here because I guilted you into it, but there are two reasons why tonight's film is worth seeing. First, Hong Kong film has long been known as one of the world's most successful cinemas outside of Hollywood. And although you may associate Hong Kong film with Bruce Lee and Jackie Chan, we have an image coming up here in a second. Um, <laughs> that's what you think of when you think of Hong Kong film, right? Um, the star of tonight's film, Michael Hoy is a comedian whose movies outgrossed Bruce Lee in the local box office and is such a big international star that he was even distributed in Europe. So here you can actually see a Spanish poster of um, one of Michael Hoy's films, not the film that we'll see tonight, but the first film that was distributed. Um, it was the first international crossover. As you can see, this was distributed, this was in Spanish in Spain. And I actually, over the years, I've collected posters for him. I have French, German, I think I have one in, like from the former Yugoslavia. So it's a sign of, of how successful he was. And just to backtrack a little bit, um, this is him performing stand-up. He's in his 70s now, and he still does stand-up. It's amazing. Um, and as just a sign of how all Hong Kong artists have to deal with the legacy of Bruce Lee and Jackie Chan. Michael Hoy actually went to the um, famed Golden Harvest Film um, Studios with the two of them all at the same time. Um, he was often double billed with Bruce Lee, and you can see him here doing an, an homage and parody to Bruce Lee in a kitchen fight scene using sausages as nunchucks. <laughs> so back to why we should watch Hong Kong film. My second personal interest in Hong Kong cinema has to do with surveillance, a topic that is often in the news nowadays and an issue on which Hong Kong has much to teach us. So why do I think Hong Kong film is related to surveillance? If you hear Hong Kong and surveillance together, you might think of some recent real world events like NSA whistleblower Edward Snowden, who fled first to Hong Kong or the 2014 umbrella protests, when Hong Kong residents organized against Chinese government control. But I'd like to emphasize film history, where surveillance has been an important recurring theme throughout world cinema. So here you may sort of recognize what's going on. This is the logo for the Shaw Brothers, a storied Shaw Brothers studio, which is for many years the most important studio in Hong Kong. It's the one that brought you all the martial arts movies that you think of when you think of Hong Kong film. And what you can see as a sign of how ambitious Hong Kong cinema was over, its, over the decades is the Shaw Brothers studio just borrowed the Warner Brothers logo <laughs> and, and reproduced it so, in sort of made in Hong Kong fashion. Surveillance has long been an important theme in both Hong Kong and Hollywood film. We all know Rear Window, the Hitchcock classic, but did you know there was a Hong Kong remake made only six months after the Hollywood film? Even more interesting, although the Hong Kong remake reproduces plot and images for shot with shot for shot fidelity, it also drastically changes it. While we all think of the Hitchcock film as a murder mystery, the Hong Kong remake is a musical and situational comedy which has a lot of fun with Rear Window's voyeurism, but doesn't have to kill off anybody to justify it. So I don't know if you can see the, um, what's going on here. It's actually a Chinese opera troupe. So just in the middle of the Hong Kong remake of Rear Window, a Chinese opera troupe just files in to start performing. So. 
I can't overemphasize the significance of this unusually lighthearted approach to surveillance typical of Hong Kong film. Throughout Western culture, we tend to think of surveillance in dystopian and negative terms like red light cameras and airport security. But as I argue in my new book, what we see in Hong Kong cinema is a more nuanced, less paranoid, often playful approach to surveillance, which acknowledges intrusions on privacy and individual liberty, but also emphasizes how visual observation and information processing can be advantageous. These advantageous instances of surveillance can happen, for example, when an individual or corporation uses information analysis for profit. So I know this image doesn't look like a particularly successful example of surveillance with these naked, half-naked police officers, but um, the film buffs among you out there will, may recognize that Michael Hoy, who is on the left here, and his brother Sam Hoy, who was actually a huge canto pop star, a pop star throughout the 70s and the 80s, they are actually reproducing a famous sequence from the Silent Star film, a Silent Star Harold Lloyd's film, Safety Last, when he climbs on the outside of a skyscraper. So another sign of, of how Hong Kong cinema is always engaged with Hollywood and very self-aware in their references. Michael Hoy's film, Chicken and Duck Talk, the film we are about to watch tonight, is all about this duality in surveillance. If you know Tam Po Po, the hilarious ramen western that appeared a few years before this film, you'll recognize one inspiration for this movie. But another thing I'd especially like you to notice is how Chicken and Duck Talk has fun with the practices of corporate spying, government and employee monitoring that it initially mocks. So just think about those things as you watch the movie. I could go on about all the in-jokes and references in this film for which Michael Hoy was named by the American Film Institute as the year's best comic performance. It's rare for comedians to become such international crossover stars. After all, unlike Bruce Lee and Jackie Chan, who are action stars, Michael Hoy's genre of comedy is usually language and culture dependent. But one reason, I think, that Michael Hoy was able to transcend these limitations is that his movies take up issues relevant throughout the world. Surveillance, I argue, is central to the star's comedy. And in learning more about Hong Kong film and one of its most beloved stars, we might also learn to diffuse fear with laughter. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy the film. <laughs>